Hi, I'm James Malarkey with Malarkey Roofing Products. We're gonna do a live demonstration of our OmniSeal self-adhered rolled roofing in a cold weather application. Before we start, let me introduce you to the products. For this demonstration, we're gonna use the 410 OmniSeal base sheet, which is a nail base base sheet, the 420 OmniSeal base ply sheet, which is also a self-adhering base and ply sheet, our 430 one square roll of glass cap sheet, We'll also be using our polyester 435 OmniSeal Cap Plus. In the latter part of this demonstration, we're gonna be utilizing some of our shingle products. This includes our Smart Start Starter, which is a split starter designed specifically for a malarkey shingle. And we're going to use our new Vista shingle with next gen technology. We're also going to introduce to you our new 1031 Secure Start Plus Synthetic, which is a five layer synthetic, which gives you multiple layers of redundancy and added protection. The new synthetic gives you one of the best walk surfaces in the industry. One of the great features to the OmniSeal line of products is that it requires a very small number of tools to apply. We have laid out the tools needed for the job. A 70 pound heavyweight roller, a hand roller, a hot air gun, a trowel, a roofing hatchet, 10 snips, and a cock gun. Always make sure that you have the proper personal protection when doing a job. We want to make sure that on the edges we have enough material to put about an inch and a half to two inches over. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually going to fasten that against the deck so that it doesn't interfere with your metal installation. Some great features of the Malarkey 410 nail base are that it's an SBS Palmer modified SBS sheet, so it's very flexible and pliable. It's also easy to work with and cut. It lays down nice and flat, as you can see. We're gonna take one third of the sheet off so that we don't stack the laps. In order to set my course, I'm gonna line this two inch line at the edge of the roof. Make sure it's straight down. What I'm gonna do is put a nail here to, be, to begin. I'm gonna put it nine inches off the edge. I'll come to the other end of this sheet here, and I'll line this with the two inch mark right on the edge. And I'll begin my nail pattern of 18 inches. Now that we've set our first course, we're gonna roll out our second course. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lap these over two inches. You could also use four inches, but in this case, we only need two inches of overlap. There's two reasons for the two different overlap lines. Two inches is for a non-heat system, four inches is for a heated system. And what I mean by heated, that is a torch down system. So in some territories, they'll use a base sheet and then they'll actually take a torch down product and put it over. And the reason why they'll use four inches is to make sure that the heat doesn't get under the laps and contact the deck and cause a fire. Now we're going to do our lap line nailing pattern, which is nine inches on center. So since we're nailing off the edge, we can start nine inches from the inside and we wanna make sure it's right over the lap. On the next part of the pattern, we're gonna run 18 inches on centers on two lines here, and they're gonna be staggered. If you notice here, I split one of the sheets in half. And the reason why we did that, based on the code, is that we need to be 18 inches above the roof deck and six inches within the roof deck. Now that we're finished nailing the base sheet in, we're going to trim the edge one to two inches off the side. So the way to trace it is, is use the edge of your hammer. We're gonna cut out two inches. Once 
One of the ways to make a corner easier to work with is to trim the corner at a 45 degree angle. So that way you can fold it over and nail it into place. If you noticed, we terminated the base sheet one and a half to two inches over the edge. And what this has done is created a second line of protection with your drip edge. The base sheet is the primary foundation for the three-ply roof system. There are three major functions. One, it provides a clean roof deck surface that is primed, that removes imperfections. Two, it protects the roof system from building movement and air pressure. Three, it allows you to service the system without having to remove the roof deck or substrate. The next step in the OmniSeal 3-ply system is to use our SBS modified self-adhered ply sheet. Before we start installing the ply sheet, we're gonna cut it in half so that the laps don't stack. Now that we've got our sheet cut, we put it on the leading edge of the roof with the straight lines lined right up to the edge on both on the left and right hand side of the roof. Now remember this is cold weather application so we're not going to have the adhesion properties we would if we had direct sunlight where everything was activating. And because we want to get some adhesion here we're going to utilize a hot air welder and we'll bond the seam at the edge and we'll make sure that the sheet is nice and flat with the deck surface and has no imperfections. In the next step of the installation process, we're gonna utilize a hot air welder and pressure from a silicon roller to adhere the leading edge of the roofing membrane. Whenever using power tools, make sure to wear safety glasses. Let's go ahead and begin the installation of the membrane. Between 20 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, a hot air welder is recommended for immediate sealing and quicker bonding of the layers. Doesn't take a lot of heat or pressure to get this to activate. And it'll give us a nice fully welded bond Once you've heat welded the membrane, take a trowel and test it to make sure that it won't separate. As you can see here, this is a nice solid bond that is not gonna delaminate. We're laying down our second course of our mid ply. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lap this four inches over the existing ply. We've trimmed the edge here so that it's smooth and flush with the edge of the deck. What we're gonna do is make sure this is nice and flush, kind of work it out from the center, make sure there's no imperfections. utilize a weighted roller to remove any imperfections in the sheet. Check the seams with your trowel. If you can delaminate the lap seam, make sure there's enough room for your hot air welder to get underneath and to apply pressure with the weighted roller. The first thing we're going to do is prep our edge metal. You can do this by using acetone or vinegar. You could also lightly abrade the surface with sandpaper. In this case, because we're using a painted metal, we're going to just use the acetone to clean it. Now we're gonna cut the edge metal to the length of the roof deck. We're gonna trim it with a slight radius. This prevents the material from biting into the cap sheet and also prevents the metal from going over the edge of the roof deck. To match the width of the edge metal, I'm going to put a small line around the perimeter. We'll now lay our mastic into place and trowel it to the width of the line or close to. We're now going to set our edge metal into the mastic and we'll put a small dab of mastic under the corner of the edge metal. In the corner, we're gonna apply a small pyramid pattern Now we're going to do the industry standard fastening pattern, two rows, six inches on center staggered. We're going to start the nailing pattern one inch from the bend on each side. 
to accommodate toward the expansion and contraction of the metal, we use this nailing pattern. The last step in the metal preparation is to fog coat asphaltic primer to the surface. We've finished our base, ply, and perimeter metal. We're ready now to install our 435 OmniSeal Plus cap sheet. Once you've aligned the cap sheet, trim the edge. We're putting on the second course of the OmniSeal cap sheet. And what I'm doing is overlapping the uh, selvage edge, which is a four inch selvage edge. I wanna make sure these are nicely butted together so that there's no real apparent seam. When you run to the end of your roll, you're gonna to have to put a preceding sheet on top of it. This is called a T-seam transition. What this does is it prevents water intrusion and also improves the aesthetics of the transition. Before you pull your film up, you're gonna lay your sheet into place. You're gonna cut from the four inch mark to the edge of your overlap, a 45 degree angle. This is your transition. You're now going to pull your sheet back, release the film, pull your selvage edge film to the edge of the sheet, and then lay it into place. Use a silicone roller on the selvage edge to improve the bond. Before we do a T-seam transition, we're gonna make sure that the material is six inches overlap. We recommend a six inch transition. What we'll do is draw a straight line on this transition. That way we know which direction to run our mastic from and how far to get it to the edge without creating a mess. We'll lightly coat the surface with an SBS trowel grade mastic. You don't wanna use excessive mastic because it can actually damage the sheet. This will promote the bond and prevent water from intruding. Before I lay my material down in this mastic, I'm gonna pull the material back and then pull off the release film. I'm going to lay it into place. Then I'll pull the preceding back sheet off and I'll cut a 45 degree on the upper preceding sheet for the next transition. On your trailing edge, cut a 45 degree angle on your underlying sheet. On your leading edge, cut a 45 degree angle on your overlying sheet. I'll use a silicone roller to press the material into place and make sure it's fully secure. Now that the low slope portion of our roof is installed, we're going to install our synthetic underlayment with our starter and shingles. We just finished installing our 1031 Secure Start Plus synthetic underlayment. We utilize plastic cap nails, which are factory recommended for any warranty. If you look at the nailing pattern on a residential application, at the lap seam or the base of the sheet, we recommend that you hit every single target. Next, we're gonna utilize Malarkey's Smart Start Starter, which is a split starter that splits in the middle of the sheet and is uniquely designed for Malarkey's laminate shingles and enhanced nailing zone. When placing the starter on the roof, you want to put it at the leading edge, and it has an SEBS modified asphalt that provides superior adhesion to the shingle to prevent wind uplift. 
before we start applying the Malarkey Smart Start Starter, we're gonna cut off a six inch strip. This will make sure that the laps don't line up with our shingles. We are going to nail one and a half inches above the leading edge and one inch inside the edge. We're going to place four nails evenly across the sheet. And repeat the process on the next course. Now we're going to complete the roof deck with our Vista shingle. This version is Vista AR, which has 12 years of algae resistance in it. We just completed our first course of shingles, and if you notice, we used a high wind nailing pattern, which is six nails per shingle. If you also notice, we didn't have to shoot at the lowest line on the shingle, and that's because we have one and three quarters of an inch to work with. This is called the zone technology. We've now completed our low slope to steep slope transition on our Omni Seal system. As you can tell, we have complementary colors that match nicely with our shingles, and we've also used our decorative hip and ridge with drop blends that match the roof shingles. Thank you for watching our Omni Seal low slope cold weather installation to a steep slope transition. Find technical guides and product installation instructions on our website, malarkeyroofing.com.